Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'm going to be reviewing Module 1, Kinematics, which is part of the New South Wales curriculum here in Australia. And this should hopefully help for you with your Year 11 exams. Now, before I start, please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Now, the purpose of this video is not to give you a detailed examination of what this particular module entails. I have many videos on my YouTube channel and on my website where you can explore the concepts at a greater depth. Now, the topic is divided up into two key inquiry questions. The first states, how is an object moving in a straight line described and predicted? In essence, I'm gonna be talking about moving in a straight line or one dimension. The other area is now looking at two dimensions, or what we say is moving in a plane, so not three dimensions. And so the inquiry question in this case states, how is an object that changes its direction of movement on a plane described? And so I'm gonna stay moving in 2D. And you'll see that one follows on nicely from the other, and it actually sets the groundwork for module two, which is all about dynamics, but that's in the next video. So when we're looking at motion in one dimension, we're looking at five key variables where we examine motion or try to describe motion. And the first, of course, is velocity. Now, velocity, of course, could be an average velocity, but it also could mean an initial velocity and a final velocity if it is changing its velocity. So we have the velocity described in this way. Now, we'll also we'll be looking at how an object changes its displacement which we use the letter S, and then also we're looking at the rate of change of that displacement, so therefore we have time. And finally, if an object is changing its velocity, then we say it is accelerating, which is the rate of change of velocity, and so we have acceleration. So those are the five key variables that we will be examining when we're describing motion. Now in this particular unit, that is in year 11, we're only interested in values of acceleration that are constant. Now, because we are dealing with only what we call rectilinear motion, forward and backward, then in essence, we described any of these values either as a positive value or a negative value. And so, although the positive is completely relative to who observes it, I can make this positive, I could make this positive, whatever is 180 degrees to that will automatically be negative. When we examine these particular variables, we look at it in one of two ways. The first is graphical, and the second, we look at the equations of motion. So when we examine motion in a graphical sense, we are really looking at one or two of these key variables with respect to time. And so what we are interested in generally are our displacement time graphs and our velocity time graphs. I could here put in acceleration time graphs, but as I stated in general situations, we will be looking at accelerations that are constant. And so all we end up having is horizontal lines on that particular graph. But you need to be familiar what the graphs look like when an object is changing its velocity, it's changing its displacement, when it's changing all of these things, of course, with respect to time. Also, you need to be able to draw the graphs that are associated with objects that are moving with any of these particular variables changing. But then we move on the numerical analysis of these particular variables, and we have our equations of motion. Now, there are, I can list a number of equations of motion. Again, I've got a video on that. But we can actually derive the equations of motion from understanding the graphical relationships that exist over here. But you need to be familiar with using the equations of motion, at least in one dimension, of these situations here. Now then we move on two dimensions. Now when we look at two dimensions, the first is the grounding or understanding of how we analyze objects moving in two dimensions. And that brings us to the topic of vectors. And so you need to be familiar how to analyze vectors, both in a graphical sense, that we, how we add vectors, let's say by using the idea of arrows head to tail and the resultant is the start to finish, but also looking at the components. And so we have this horizontal component of this vector here and the vertical component and the trigonometry that is associated with that. But then once we understand vectors, we can now apply our understanding of vectors with the equations of motion, or at least in constant velocity, and look at what we refer to as relative motion. 
Now, relative motion is a very important underpinning for a lot of aspects of physics. That is, when we measure something, it is always measured relative to the observer. And so what we do with relative motion is look at simple situations. In this case, we're looking usually at constant velocity situations. And we ask ourselves the question, if object A is moving in a particular velocity with a particular direction, and object B is also having its own velocity with its respect of this, let's say, the stationary ground, what is the velocity that A might see of B or vice versa? And so we look at vector analysis and looking at relative motion in that sense. So all of this is covered in kinematics. And I will say this is actually a fairly short unit because it really lays the groundwork for the next topic, which is dynamics, where we look at not describing motion, but now explaining motion. But that's the next video. I hope that has been helpful. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this is helpful for you. And as I stated, please consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.